Okay, so we're on to the last question. Thinking about this, you always, you, you always can do this a little bit, in, uh, especially in stats. Um, we've gone all the way through it. What haven't we seen anything about yet? I can only think of one topic that hasn't come up at all. Probably. No, geometric. Geometric, no, geometric isn't it? I, I'm expecting there'll be some geometric because we haven't had any geometric at all. Anne, Bill, Chris and Deepak play a game with a fair Thank cubicle you. dice. A, B, C and D. See what they did there. Starting with Anne, they take turns in alphabetical order to throw the die. The process is repeated as many times as necessary until a player throws a six. When this happens, the game stops and this player is the winner. Find the probability that Chris wins on his first throw. Okay, what needs to have happened in order for Chris uh, to win on his first throw? He was the third person, so we need to have had two fails. Anne and Bill need to have failed, don't they? So we need to have had, uh, what's the probability of them failing? Five sixths. We need to have had five sixths and five sixths, followed by Chris winning, which is a sixth. And we can see already our geometric distribution <coughs> emerging. Five sixths squared times one over six gives us 25 over 216. Brilliant start. Right, uh, what about the probability that Deepak wins on his second throw? So what will have happened then? A, B, C and D will have failed, followed by A, B and C failing. So we will have had seven failures, followed by the one success. So that is, I think I can just change my calculation on the screen, and that'll make it a little bit less typing. Oh. 0.0465, it's refused to give it me as a fraction. 0.0465 as our answer to that one. Okay, part three. What's the probability that Anne gets a third throw? Now this is interesting, is it? Because this isn't saying what's the probability that she wins on the third throw, it's just that she gets a third throw. So actually we don't need anybody to have won. We don't care about the winning or not in this one. We just need them all to have lost up to that point. So that needs to be A, B and C having, all having one throw unsuccessfully, followed by them all having a second throw unsuccessfully. That's eight consecutive unsuccessful throws. If that happens, that's enough. If we get eight successful, eight unsuccessful throws, it doesn't make any difference what happens next. <coughs> Anne will get to get her third throw. That's, that's it. That's all that needs to happen. So, five sixths <coughs> to the power of eight is 0.233 to three significant figures. There we go. Right, final bit. What's the probability that Bill throws the die exactly three times. Okay. Um, it's quite, there's quite a few ways that that could happen. What are you thinking, Richard? Three ways. Is, are there only three ways? Mm -hmm. I think there's maybe more than three ways that it could happen. If he could throw it exactly three times, well, he could, he could be successful on his third throw, in which case he would have thrown it exactly three times. So hang on, let's, let's, let's write these down as we're going along. If he's successful on his third throw, then that is, what's that, Eight, nine, nine failures followed by his success. So that's one way it could happen. But it's not the only way it could happen. Because it could happen if the next person, Chris, is successful. Then he would have had exactly three, th three throws. So that's five sixths to the ten times a six. That's Chris being successful. Or it could happen if Deepak was successful on his next throw. Five sixths 
to the 11 times the sixth. And if Anne has exactly four throws and is successful on her fourth throw, then Bill won't get to do his fourth throw. That's 5 6 to the 12 times 1 sixth. However, the next auction gets back round to Bill having a fourth throw. So that's it. One of those four things has to have happened. So we need to work out that total sum, which comes out as being, this is, again, some more irritating number crunching, isn't it? So it may take me a moment to get the old calculator up to speed. Um, I think I'm going to just do... I'm going to do a kind of cheeky factorisation on my calculator and not worry about the sixth until the end. Is anybody else doing this to check my answer? No. Nobody else cares. The lonely life of a math teacher. And I get. 0 0.1003428 to three significant figures. And I'm happy with that because that's maths.